Hi, Jacob from Turtle. We had an interesting question in our Discord about how to uh, how can we render raw HTML in Turtle. So um, you might have noticed that if you insert uh, a text string something like this, and you insert uh, um, HTML here. Uh, it will just render it out as text, it will not actually render the HTML as it is. Uh, if you paste it in here, you might actually, uh, it will work, you will get an H1 with this style. But if you want to do it dynamically, for example, if you get the HTML from an API and you want to insert it uh, into the application, how would you do this? Uh, and I think the question was specifically about custom code. So using the new custom code uh, with a custom action, how can you, how can you achieve this? Um, so first of all, it's always good to start with saying that uh, this is probably not the right way to do it. Uh, there are some use cases where this makes sense, um, but in uh, we actually ran into this issue in Turtle as well, where we uh, we get some data from an API. This is a structured uh, HTML, but we actually can get it in JSON format as well. It doesn't matter. But the idea is that instead you kind of loop over uh, this content. So here's a div. Here's an H1, and for each one, you uh, you render a turtle uh, element, which would be a corresponding H1 or a div or whatever. And that way you can actually insert uh, events and you can use the turtle rendering engine, which is gonna be faster than just updating the HTML directly. Uh, but in this case, we were specifically about uh, uh, how to update the HTML. So I'm gonna show that. So um, let's start by creating a new custom action. Uh, in this case, it is an action, it's not a formula because a formula is a pure function uh, that has no side effects, but in this case there is a side effect. The side effect is that we update uh, or mutate the, the DOM itself. So let's create an action. Set inner HTML, I'm gonna call it. And um, we need a few arguments. The first argument being the element we want to update, element. And I think we do not have an element type since I say unknown. The second argument is uh, the HTML we want to use, and that is a string. And then we have our code here. I'll just quickly update the arguments to instead, I will use a, something called a destructure. Uh, so here we can take our argument, which is an object, and I can just get the element and the HTML that makes it a bit clear. And I don't think we need the, uh, the context in this case. So all we need to do is saying element, uh, now we're in JavaScript land, so we have to uh, know our JavaScript. In this case, I looked it up on a in the end, and there's something called inner HTML, which is a, uh, you can get or set the inner HTML. There's also one called outer HTML, uh, but that will update the element we're trying to set as well, uh, which in this case is actually a total element we're trying to set it on, and that's gonna, then we kind of have two rendering engine fightings. So that's not gonna be nice. So in this case, we are kind of ejecting, uh, ejecting from the title, and, and just saying uh, we update the inner HTML directly and the title doesn't know anything about it. So let's do element inner HTML equal to HTML. That's all we really need for, for this one. Let's go back to our homepage. So we want to use it here. Let's actually create a component because uh, then we can encapsulate all our logic there. And I'm gonna go ahead and call it dangerously render HTML. And I think this makes sense because, again, this is a bit of a dangerous action. Um, because uh, when you render HTML directly, you actually render anything uh, with this uh, this action we just created. So if someone insert a script that listens to your keystrokes, for example, to or it tried to to crash your site, something like that, it will still be rendered. And uh, so they have full action. So the idea is that if you work with multiple people, naming it something like this uh, will inform them that uh, at least hint towards that uh, you need to know where this HTML come from. Is it safe? Um, so yeah, if it comes for user-generated content, if you're building a form, for example, in Turtle, which is definitely possible, uh, you don't want to use this one to render uh, user-generated content because they can insert anything then. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. And uh, let's just say we want to render it directly into the root here. So we need some way to get the root element. Let's just call, make an ID called, uh, let's just call it element, that's fine. And then we want to set this whenever we load it. So as soon as this element is loaded up, we want to set it to, uh, we actually need to create an attribute, I guess. So we want an attribute called XML. That's the only attribute we need. Uh, let's do, a, it's always good to do a test value. 
Hello world is what we will see in the editor. Doesn't come out. Hello world. Unload. We want to get the elements. We have something called get element. So uh, and this would be ID's element. That's what we called it. And the HTML is just the HTML. That's the input. And this actually go ahead and copy this one. I put it into an attribute change as well. Because if someone updates this attribute uh, in the middle of the application, then it will uh, it will update. Uh, here as well. So that's all our logic inside a single component. Let's go back to our home page and let's update uh, instead of just rendering this text, let's make a new element, components, dangerous to render HTML. Let's copy this, insert it here. You see right now we just get undefined. That's because we don't insert anything. And if we do this, you can see that now we are actually um, rendering the HTML as HTML, not as a uh, as text, so we get the color Rebecca purple and the font size to RAM. And if I, for example, remove this uh, exclamation mark, then uh, then we can see that it updates here immediately. So it's an interesting use case. I think the question was very specifically how to do this with custom code, uh, and this is not wrong, uh, but I think it's a very specific use case. This is this use case uh, is only really valid if you. Uh, first of all, trust the HTML you get in. You have to be able to to know that this is not dangerous content. Uh, and and secondly, it it's probably best for content where you don't really know what's coming in. So maybe there are script tags you actually want to render the script tag. Uh, maybe it could be anything really. Uh, but if you know beforehand kind of what can come up, so for example in the total block, uh, we know there's only so many elements we use, then there are better ways to do it, and that is to uh, kind of see it as data instead of HTML and then pass it yourself uh, and loop over it and then uh, insert the, the elements into it because then you can actually set up events uh, on each element. If I want to create like an unclick on this uh, element right now, this insert one, there's not really any way to do it because you eject it from Turtle. This is now whatever's inside here. Uh, Turtle doesn't know anything about it. You can set up you know, like your own script tag or a style or something to style it but it's, uh, you lose a lot of the benefits. Uh, so, yeah. But it's, uh, there are use cases. Uh, in the future, we might build something, uh, where you, something natively, where you can actually render HTML, but with a bit more security, where you can actually uh, pick each element and say, I want to render uh, H1s like this and H2s like that. Uh, but it's not on the roadmap right now. Uh, but if you just have to make HTML you want to render, then this is the way to do it. Just be careful uh, with the HTML uh, you put into here because it can really be anything. Anyways, I hope this was uh, this was useful. See you.